Welcome to this Hi. Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. What? Wednesdays. <laughs> Traveling young. Look at that. We're doing some Wednesday action now. And it's Academy Awards season. It is. We're so excited. We, we've always watched the Academy Awards. I know they're kind of, you know, useless these days. I, uh, it's always fun to watch. We I, did productions. So. I practiced my acceptance speech a few times, although yes. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to give it. But that's all right. But for the second year in a row, Denmark has... A movie yes. nominated. Let's see. Hopefully they win. Hopefully. But three Fantastic. awards. Three awards for the movie yep. called Flucked. Yes, last year was Jook. This year is Flucked. Flucked. And it's nominated for Best Animated Feature, yes. Best Documentary, and Best International Film. I think it could win all three. And I'm going to make one quick point. Uh oh. Notice how it's no longer called Best Foreign Film. Oh. Just saying the word foreign. It's now called mm. Best Inter... So I'm going to move the pillow. Um, <laughs> just referencing something I made, a comment I made a few yeah, videos yeah. ago about uh, like word. Uh, the word no. foreign. So it's not. It's now Best International <laughs> Feature. And so we watched it a couple days we ago. Did. And we have not spoken about it since. So no. what we're sharing now will be the first time we share anything... New to us all. Even to each other. <laughs> Uh, I don't, uh, just for people who know, we're going to talk a little bit about it, obviously. Yeah. So if you've never seen it and you're afraid, we're going to give something away. Although, I don't know if there's spoilers necessarily with this kind of movie. But just in case, so you know, yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about the movie. So be prepared for that. Mm. Be prepared for the fact that we're going to talk yeah, about the movie. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm going to make one comment straight up, which is, this is about um, an individual and his experience leaving Afghanistan mm. and coming to Denmark. And yeah. what I really appreciate about this movie, right off the bat, is, well, I guess it wasn't really right. I'm saying it right off the bat. <laughs> I appreciated this towards the end when yes. I saw the whole movie. Um, they, they didn't really talk about integrating as an immigrant or no. the process of being a refugee in Denmark, which I think is good because for two reasons. Yeah. Reason one is a pretty controversial subject here. Yeah. Um, and reason two, if that's what you focus on, that's what the movie's about. Mm. And what this is about is the humanity of yeah, going through and accept all the steps and all yeah. the, th to really drive home the fact that he was fleeing a place that he, yeah. multiple places, yeah. <laughs> um, that he didn't want to be and could never have a life. And so I really appreciate the fact that that's what it centered around was just his life and his journey to get to the point where he even yeah. would be a refugee here in Denmark. And I thought that was just a genius way to, to approach the humanity of what mm. refugees go through in order to get here. So that was one thing I really wanted to say right <laughs> off. <laughs> Did you want to say your second? No, uh, no I'll get, no, that's it. We'll, we'll just, we'll bounce off. We'll bounce off. Um, I mean, for me, it was really interesting. Uh, this, I think, is a little bit where um, American international education kind of fails us a little bit because I did not know that much about what, what had happened in Afghanistan in the 70s. I knew that the Soviets had come in and um, there had been a war, but it never occurred to me that people would flee to Moscow like his family did. Like it just never occurred to me that that's where you would go. Yeah, I was I don't surprised know why. that's where... Like I, I was surprised that that was kind of where they ended up. Since it's... they're battling with Yeah, Russia I was like, especially or, since or they were battling with it. And, and it was interesting because we had gone to Russia in 2018. So it was kind of interesting to see what it was like in 2018 and then see kind of some of the the imagery and that he was there around the time that it had just started opening up the the iron curtain had just fallen and so things were really changing and so it was kind of interesting to see his take on what it was like there well and i mean they went to that mcdonald's which we actually yeah, went yeah, to the, the mcdonald's, McDonald's in moscow the first mcdonald's of, yeah. and they had a moment where they kind of wanted to see what that was all about him and his brother but then um, they ran into the but they ran into police, so they're basically police. <laughs> constantly being hounded and stuff by yeah. police. And they couldn't even really live a life. And that's like, gosh, what what thinking about that experience, I mean, 
it's easy to take for granted. I mean, you know, we're immigrants here and yeah. obviously our circumstances like 180 degrees different <laughs> yeah, than that. So different. And it makes you for us like come home and think of it that way like, yeah. you know, I can't imagine. And and it's relevant today because of everything going on in in Ukraine where there's a ton of people yeah. fleeing Ukraine yeah, trying to find and and the idea of fleeing someplace because you literally can't live there can't anymore. live there and you're concerned about survival and yeah. then not knowing i mean i think about how it stresses me out a little bit not knowing what we're going to do this summer <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then like not knowing what you're going to do for the rest of your life oh yeah like you can't just... even make plans on what your no. future is going to be it really is i mean i kept thinking about the, the whole time when they were going through the stuff in russia and when they attempted to come and then couldn't make it and had yeah. to go back i mean it's just like well it's just like they went from horrible situation to horrible situation and and then you know it was like i i think it was it's kind of sad that you go through all of that and then you finally get to a place where you are safe and and you're okay but you can't enjoy that because you kind of live with that trauma and you never kind of trust that it's going to be okay. Yeah, I he was he was living with the concern of um, of his family, yeah. and they weren't all together. And yeah, it's like never being able to breathe like mm. relief has got to be Hard. like super difficult. So that's kind of the story of yeah. it. But I really I want to also touch on like I really like the story that the style of telling yeah. the story because. It's animated, um, and so I thought it was really cool and just creative, basically. Like a time, so it's like kind of him him being interviewed, and they jump to moments in his childhood or experiences that yeah. he had, and they and I think having kind of this element of uh, of of animation made mm. it more possible to do that and made it feel more like you could connect you to it a little bit more. But they yeah. also did a whole lot with like colors. And they changed mm, yeah. the style of animation when things got really yeah, like the scary intense people and, were very yeah. were were animated very differently. So like if it was somebody who was very aggressive or being very mean to them, they were they were animated very differently. And I kind of almost wonder if that's because that's how he sees it in his head, you know, like because right. your brain just kind of shuts things out and you can't see it very well. So. I mean, I hadn't thought about that or even the fact, just the animation in general, I guess, is how yeah. you probably, like you, you know, when you kind think back to your memories, you don't remember bit. all the details. Yeah. You remember just kind of like big things and yeah. not like all the details of people's faces and everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I really, I thought it was a very creative way to tell that story and made me connect to it a little bit more because they had then an open palette of, op, you know, yeah. of, of options in terms of how to how to creatively weren't restricted by realism mm. and they could just do whatever um but i also thought there was some real video in there at times showing yeah there was old afghanistan yeah. and stuff and i really i thought it was cool how they did it in a style where it wasn't taking up the entire screen it was like a no. window and it was kind of cool because you felt like you were looking through a window of something it's like a which is almost time, and you know? it was like the window yeah. of their mind of of, of those things too it's like so a memory. i mean just the whole style of of everything was so creative and well, I, I just I, enhanced the story i think yeah. so much more and i i really liked and this is the first movie that i think i've ever seen done this way where if you watch enough movies if you watch a lot of documentaries um and we we really like to watch a lot of documentaries there's something about the way that the audio is done like it's very you know they don't they're not very careful about like kind of ambient noise and stuff and so i wasn't expecting that because what it is is they actually did do these interviews on camera and so they were like in his apartment on camera clearly you know recording these interviews but then they animated over that so it was like you can still hear you know people doing dishes and things and putting plates on tables and things like that and they animate over that because that's part of the am ambient noise but it was just like such an interesting way of handling a documentary that way and i think it was good that they bounced around from some serious topics and then there was some laughter when yeah, he was like yeah. in i guess present day or close to mm. present point when the interview was happening with his uh, partner 
And I really enjoyed that because yeah. it kind of like pulled you in and then gave you a little bit of a break. Yeah. Because too much intensity, like nonstop, would yeah. have just been a little bit of a turnoff. So the, the animated blood sport with Jean Claude Van Damme yeah. was kind of fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but it was nice that they bounced around and gave some humor yeah. and then some seriousness. So, um, I, I I mean I didn't pay attention to what other films are nominated for the other no. uh, all the other fellow nominees for the same categories. So I couldn't say anything about how good they are or aren't, but this I was really super impressed. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Um and I will say we wa we so we it's it's not, so if you're in Denmark it's on DR and you could just watch it for free. Um we rented it on iTunes because I wanted to make sure we had English subtitles so we could understand we yeah, started watching it on dr yeah. and i was struggling and i think the like brisket agrees <laughs> i think that we uh i mean there's so many subtle things that i would have not wanted to miss yeah, um, that i would have absolutely I, missed in the I language and the agree. all that so i'm glad we watched the mm. so it was they were speaking danish but the subtitles were in english yeah yeah i think that that i think it would have taken away us trying to figure out what they're saying with danish subtitles yeah. so <laughs> So the Academy Awards are Sunday evening, or basically the middle of the night, Monday morning for us. Um, so uh, you got a couple days to watch the movie. You should definitely, should definitely, definitely watch it. Watch I thought it. it was very impressive. And hopefully we come home with a statue like last year. And then hopefully, I don't even know, maybe maybe this is just a yearly thing now. Denmark is rocking and rolling <laughs> at the Academy out. Awards. Really good. And I really and I thought it was super cool that it's a very different style yeah. movie. It's not yeah, like it Denmark. Is. It's not like they're... The country is being represented at the Academy Awards with the exact same type of movie. I mean, it's yeah. like so different than Juk was yeah. uh, last yeah. year. So I really thought that was also cool. It's like you never know what you're going to get out of the Danish Film Institute or well, all the, I mean, there were one of the contributors, actually the list of everybody at the very beginning that contributed. Yeah, like yeah. Every like Nordic went on country forever. was involved. And Nikolai uh, Coulter Rwaldo. I yeah, can't ever say his name. Producer, I'm so sorry, but the guy producer. from uh, Game mm -hmm. of Thrones was an executive Who we saw at an airport once. We did. Yeah, did. I saw his... I saw the back of his head. I, yeah, and then we Googled and <laughs> saw he made an Instagram post later that day and he had the same clothes on, so we know it was him. Um, but, yeah. yeah. It's a wonderful movie. You should absolutely, absolutely go watch it. Please go in with your, your eyes open and your heart open because it, it really is a harrowing story, and I'm, I'm so yeah. impressed that he took the courage to tell his story and it's very relevant because yeah, of today because so. of all the influx of yeah, the yeah. now coming in as a result of the crisis in ukraine so um there you go if you didn't see our movie review last year <gasps> check it out link below when we spoke about druk maybe it'll be good luck maybe it'll be good luck one, yeah so that one so this we'll is again. maybe we're the good luck charm see, i don't finally. know finally well let's see i hope you watch it watch the academy awards we'll see what happens until then bye, bye.